Good morning and welcome to our online service. We're gonna be here for just under an hour. In that time, we're gonna share some news and information. We're gonna provide a time of worship, which I'm really actually excited about. And we're gonna join Pastor Lenny as he starts off a new series looking at the book of Ephesians. And so with that, welcome to Sobble Christian Fellowship. We wanted to give you a really good heads up that next week is the first week of the month, uh, which means here at SCF, we will be leading you in a time of communion. So spend this week preparing the elements. In other words, don't wait till the last minute. And parents, this could be a great opportunity, another opportunity to share with your kids why communion is important to you. If you're sitting there thinking, ah, I just don't know how to do that, we want to help you and we'd love to. Simply email jenna at sobblechurch.ca and she will do what she can to get some resources into your hands. As part of our DNA here at SCF, when we stop and remember and celebrate communion, we also take that week to ask you to consider giving towards our benevolence fund. So this week, will you consider preparing to give next week towards that fund? We have some exciting news for you. We would love to welcome little Griffin Edward Mahoney. Proud parents of this bundle of joy are Regan and Grace Mahoney, and Barry and Amy Speck, if you know them, are the happy grandparents. Our women's ministry are doing what they can to partner with the family and help celebrate little Griffin here. And if you're wondering how you can help, Simply go to sobblechurch.ca slash events for more information. This coming Tuesday at 7 and Thursday at 1 p.m. will be our last installment of our Steps of Faith series. This has been a great series for those that are looking for new and creative ways to share their faith. And not just that, Pastor Lenny shares keys on how we can live our lives as believers in the world around us. If you've missed any of these, you can easily find them on our YouTube channel or on our website, sobblechurch.ca slash resources. Okay, I was, I was told to do an announcement about lint. I don't really know why, but here is lint. Lint is fuzzy and dirty and... What? Oh, lent, lent. Got it, okay, lent. Uh, lent is something that we want to encourage you to try and participate in this year. I apologize for the corny joke. Uh, lent is a season before Easter and traditionally, Many people spend 40 days not just giving something up, but they also pray and they uh, they give and they serve. We just wanted you to start to think of some ways that you could possibly be involved uh, with us in the season of Lent, not Lent. Each week we craft these services for the majority of the church, but we also know that we're leaving out some of our younger audiences. And so we wanted to give time and space, just a few short minutes to our kids and our youth ministries. So without further ado, here is Jenna Holly. Well, good morning, SCF Kids. In today's episode of SCF Kids Online, God makes a promise with David. And at some point in our life, we've all made promises. And if we're completely honest, we've probably broken some of those promises too. Here's a few examples. Let's say your dad promises he's gonna come to your next baseball game. But then he doesn't show up. He's not there. He broke his promise. Or how about this one? You tell your mom and dad that tomorrow at school, you're gonna obey your teachers. But then you don't. You end up talking back. You broke your promise. You see, promises can be hard to keep sometimes. I've broken promises before. I'm not perfect. I'm pretty sure you're not perfect either. None of us are perfect, but God's promises, they're different. You see, what God promises, he will do it. His promises can never be broken. They're kind of like this thick book. You know, no matter what he does, you just can never break God's promises. So in our story today, God made a promise with David. He promised that David would be king forever. But does that mean that David would never get old and he would never die? I mean, how could God possibly keep a promise like that? To find the answer to that question, you need to tune in to today's episode of SCF Kids Online. You can find it at kidsonline.sobblechurch.ca. See you later. 
Hey everybody, uh, Andy here once again. Not only am I the host of today's service, I'm also the youth pastor, and it's my privilege and turn to share with you what we're learning in our student ministry. Basically, for the last three weeks, we've been in this series called Goals, and this week we're starting up uh, our last week, week four. And in all of this, my hope and my, my desire is to help you, our students, realize that you were created uh, and you were designed to accomplish God-sized goals. Now that may seem overwhelming, that may sound really big, and well, the reality is it is really big. But at the end of the day, after everything is all said and done, the point is this, is that God gives us strength to pursue God-sized goals. If we depend on Him, if we lean on Him, nothing can come against us. There's no opposition that, will, that should be able to stop us because God gives us the strength to overcome, overcome the God-sized goals that he's designed us to accomplish. We've been reading through the book of Nehemiah. I, I encourage you, I have been encouraging you, you, I want to continue to encourage you to read the book of Nehemiah and discover what goal he was given through the passion that he had, what goal he saw, what problem he saw, uh, which resulted in a goal to accomplish. No matter what people were against him, no matter what difficulties lay before him, he was still able to accomplish the goals that God had designed him to do. And so junior high students, senior high students, no matter how old you are, no matter what grade you're in, no matter what situation you're experiencing right now, God created you for a uh, God-sized goal. He designed you specifically to create a specific goal. And through that, he will give you the strength to pursue that. So stay tuned next week on all of our Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube, and simply just at the very end of the day, our website, sobblechurch.ca slash students to find the videos that we're posting almost every single day on this series called Goals. Before we get into a time of worship and singing, allow me to share with you briefly what you can expect. For the last year, our worship team has faithfully met and either streamed live or recorded worship songs for you at home. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say we have loved doing this. For the last few weeks, I've been replaying some of our past worship sets in order to give our team a very much needed break. And then this idea came to me. How great would it be to hear other voices, to see other faces, to really be led into a time of worship from other people other than our own? And so with some emails and some Instagram messages and text messages and with permission, I've been able to find a few others uh, over the next few weeks that will be leading us in worship here at SCF Online. So please welcome Joel Norman as he leads us into worship today. On a hill far away Sitting home, from ten cross, the emblem marks are free and safe. And I love that old cross, when I do. Until my trophies 
Wow, thank you, Joel, so much for taking that time, for allowing us to share your gift, and for leading us in that time of worship today. As we prepare to hear from Pastor Lenny this morning, we asked for help, and some of you responded. Thank you so much uh, for that. Today, we have Kara and Brian Palmer with us to read from the Bible and to pray today. Hi, SEF Church family. We're reading today from Acts 19, starting in verse 8. Then Paul went to the synagogue and preached boldly for the next three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some became stubborn, rejecting his message and publicly speaking against the way. So Paul left the synagogue and took the believers with him. Then he held daily discussions at the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for the next two years so that people throughout the province of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. God gave Paul the power to perform unusual miracles. When handkerchiefs or aprons that had merely touched his skin were placed on sick people, they were healed of their diseases and evil spirits were expelled. And then down to verse 17. The story of what happened spread quickly all through Ephesus to Jews and Greeks alike. A solemn fear descended on the city and the name of the Lord Jesus was greatly honored. Many who became believers confessed their sinful practices. A number of them who had been practicing sorcery brought their incantation books and burned them at a public bonfire. The value of the books was several million dollars. So the message about the Lord spread widely and had a powerful effect. Will you join us in prayer? Join us. Holy and loving God, we thank you for what you are doing this day and for each and every one in our church family. We ask that as we gather today in homes all around, that you would bring us together in your name, despite not being together. We pray for our church staff who are connecting us to you, who are ministering us and are teaching us about your truths. We pray for all those who are working to keep us safe and secure and comfortable these days. We pray for those who serve and those who govern and hold authority. We ask for wisdom for all of these people as they make decisions on our behalf. God, we can think of many people in our church family and beyond who are suffering these days and struggling, and we just ask that you would minister to them and give them your peace and your comfort. Help us all in the midst of these challenges to have hope in you, to place our confidence in you, and remind us daily of your goodness. Give us your grace to help be goodness to others. Help us each day to find our hope in you. We thank you for your presence, that you are always with us, and that you love us greatly. Amen. Today we begin a series on the book of Ephesians. What a diverse city this was. It reminds me of how churches are all so different, even how they face their challenges. For instance, this problem that a number of churches in one town faced with squirrels. The Presbyterian Church called a meeting to decide what to do about their squirrel infestation. After much prayer and consideration, they concluded that the squirrels were predestined to be there and they should not interfere with God's divine will. At the Baptist Church, the squirrels had taken an interest in the baptistry. The deacons met and decided to put a water slide into the baptistry and let the squirrels drown themselves. The squirrels liked the slide and unfortunately knew it instinctively how to swim. So twice as many squirrels showed up the following week. The Lutheran church decided that they were not in a position to harm any of God's creatures. So they humanely tra- uh, trapped their squirrels and set them free near the Baptist church. Two weeks later, the squirrels were back when the Baptists took down the water slide. 
The Episcopalians tried a much more unique path by setting out pans of whiskey around the church in an effort to kill the, the squirrels with alcohol poisoning. They sadly learned how much damage a band of drunk squirrels can do. The Catholic Church came up with a more creative strategy. They baptized all the squirrels and made them members of the church. Now, they only see the squirrels at Christmas and Easter. Not much was heard from the Jewish synagogue. In fact, they had no problem with any squirrels. Word had gotten around that the rabbi had circumcised the first squirrel and they hadn't seen any since. I know this is just a humorous story, hopefully not upsetting any of you, but I wanted to illustrate how diverse the church of Ephesus really was. In verse 1, the author identifies himself as Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. And who better to write this book than the one who founded the church of Ephesus? Paul's name was originally Saul, and since he was from the tribe of Benjamin, it's safe to believe that he was named after Israel's first king. Saul was a devoted rabbi and became the leader of an anti-Christian movement in Jerusalem that persecuted and martyred Christians. He gave his approval for, Stu for Stephen to be stoned, but in the midst of his zealous killing, God saved him, and his conversion was dramatic, immediate, and life-changing. Paul, a religious zealot, became passionate for God, and there's a big difference. Many are religious, but don't know God. Paul was ministering in the city of Antioch, and while he was there, he was called by the Spirit to take the gospel to Gentiles. The book of Acts records his three missionary journeys, and yes, Paul was the first missionary. Uh, around the year 53 AD, Paul came to Ephesus and preached the gospel. You can read his exploits in Acts chapter 18. He didn't remain there long, but two years later, while on his third missionary journey, Paul stayed in Ephesus more than two years and sold, saw that whole vast area evangelized. Ephesus became a strong church, though it was in the midst of the stronghold of Satan. The ruins of this city have been excavated, and it's located at the mouth of the Caister River, three miles from the Aegean Sea. Its easy connection with interior Asia by interlacing highways brought it commercial prosperity by land as well as by sea. The population was roughly 300,000. Some important facts as we look at this city of Ephesus. It helps us to understand what this church faced by knowing what Ephesus was like. First of all, the city contained the temple of Artemis, or as it was known by the Romans, Diana. Artemis was the fertility goddess. The temple itself was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was 60 feet high by 450 feet long by 225 feet wide. And it was supported by 127 columns. It was a richly adorned in gold and precious stones. It's believed by those in the city that the Greek god Zeus 
threw a statue of Artemis down to Ephesus. And people from all over the world would come to see her temple. This temple and city promoted the worship of idols and sexual immorality. Secondly, unique to Ephesus was the trade of the silversmiths as seen in Acts chapter 19. In fact, it was a main industry in Ephesus. Men gained great wealth by capitalizing on tourists selling their trinkets and miniature statues of Artemis to them. Paul endangered their livelihood by preaching Jesus. Christianity has always come in direct conflict with the beliefs and self-glorification of our world. Our world lives for pleasure, wealth, and fame, all of which are denounced by the Christian virtues of following God no matter what the cost. Thirdly, unique to Ephesus was it had a great amphitheater which could seat over 24,000 people. It was here that Paul's companions were taken in Acts chapter 19 and verse 29. Also, in this city was the main street known as the Way or the Arca Diana. It was paved in marble and had decorated gates at each end. One end led to the harbor and the other the amphitheater. All along the street on both sides were shops, many of which sold their souvenirs. And finally, unique to Ephesus, although not truly unique, was sorcery. It's described in Acts chapter 19, verses 19 to 20. The worship of idols and pagan gods. The second thing I want us to look at it, that we find in this uh, book of Ephesus is the religious fabric. Ephesus was truly a multicultural city. There was a large Jewish community. There were many followers of Artemis, and there were also many other cults. Until Paul's second missionary journey in 46 AD, we are not aware of any Christian influence. While Paul did not stay long, he spoke in the Jewish synagogue and then left Aquila and Priscilla to maintain and build up the work. You can read about this in Acts 18. During his third missionary journey in 53 AD, he stayed for at least two years and three months. This experience is told as already I shared in Acts 19. While he was here, he encourages the disciples of Apollos, a Christian disciple maker and teacher. He speaks in the synagogue for three months. He lectures in the hall of Tyrrhenius for two years, building disciples and the church. And during this time, many miracles happen. And then he leaves for Jerusalem. And at this same time, a riot breaks out. It's started by the silversmiths who accuse Paul and Christianity of hurting the sale of their silver idols. During Paul's stay in Ephesus, he writes 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and the second book of Corinthians. Thirdly, I want us to look at the book of Ephesus itself. The book was written about 10 years after Paul's third missionary journey, around 62 AD. And while he is imprisoned in Rome, according to Acts chapter 28, 
Many believe that this letter was a circular, meaning that it wasn't just for the church in Ephesus, but it was for all the churches, and it was circulated. It, it is written in defense that Jews and Gentiles are united in Christ. It also teaches our blessings and responsibility in Christian living. Now let's look at the influence of Christianity in Ephesus, and in fact, it mirrors in our world today. Christianity has always been at odds with the beliefs and practices of this world. We're called to influence our world by sharing our faith. In fact, a Christianity which doesn't influence the world is no Christianity at all. When I first became a follower of Christ, I wasn't discipled, and I didn't know I was called to share Christ with my world. But in grade 10, I began to grow and couldn't contain Jesus in this temple, in my, uh, within myself. I just had to share it. God desired to burst out of me. And so I just had to tell my friends about him. I can tell you I wasn't popular at school, and I was often made fun of. But soon I didn't care what my classmates thought, and I was zealous for God. I just had to talk about him, and at times that meant speaking out against sin. I'm thankful that a number of my classmates gave their lives to Jesus. Paul and the Ephesian Christians did this. Did they face opposition? Of course. In fact, so much so that a riot in Ephesus broke out and some disciples were persecuted. But Christianity left its mark in Ephesus and the church thrived in the midst of a pagan society. I want you to listen to this quote. It's in a dictionary about Ephesus. It says the Christian approach was at a variance with the tolerant approach of pagans to gods who were even not theirs. A Christian inscription at Ephesus that has been uh, excavated reads, destroying the delusive image of the demon Artemis, Demius has erected this symbol of truth, the God that drives away idols and the cross of priests, deathless and victorious sign of Christ. And on that inscription is the sign of the cross. Friends, we need to let our light shine.
I see the stars And I hear the rolling thunder And I am all through my Thank you so much for joining us today on our online service. We look forward to when we can all meet together again in the building. But until then, will you consider this? How are you sharing the gospel with those you're connected with? How are you sharing the message that you heard today, the song sung, the prayers prayed, the experience you had? Who may need to hear this? Who may need to feel and see all of this? This isn't just about the views on YouTube. This is about getting the message of Jesus out there in our community, our wide community. So will you consider sharing this video? Will you sh consider sharing the service with someone that you're connected to online? Now, as you go, will you allow me to pray with you and close the service? God, this morning, for all the homes across our region that call SCF their church home, for the homes and families that have joined us from across the province and the country, for those that are watching overseas or missionaries, we pray that you make your presence known even in this very moment. May we spend today not just doing our duty of going to church, but may we purposely find rest in you today. May we connect with you, our God, our Creator, our Savior, and our King. God, today we are thankful that you're looking to spend time with us. 
May we echo that desire and strive to spend time with you, however that looks, on a regular and on a daily basis. So as we go, I pray for safety. I pray for healing and wholeness in each of us. I pray that through the knowledge of who you are, the example set by your Son, and through the power of your Holy Spirit, that we will begin to and continue to change this world for your glory. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here again next week uh, at 10 a.m. either on our YouTube channel or on our online church platform. Either way, you can find us easily through our website, sobblechurch.ca. Thank you so much. We'll see you again.